I'm a little bit nervous because I got eye surgery. Now I can't see. Actually, I could see a lot better, and I could see everybody. Before, when I didn't have my surgery, I kind of look out there, and everybody's blurry, and it wasn't so hard. But now I'm a little nervous. So good evening, brothers and sisters, and my little brothers and sisters. Last week, we talked about baby Moses and baby Jesus. We talked about the Old Testament and the New Testament. We saw how both of them are pointing to Jesus Christ. I I gave you that analogy last week. It's like going into a dark room. You can't, you can barely see anything. You're touching around. You kind of see the the objects, but you can't really tell. So that's like the Old Testament. The New Testament is like putting on the lights. You can actually see the items that were already there. We talked about the different four, the four Gospels. We talked about the four perspectives. We talked about uh, Matthew writing about Jesus. We talked about Mark writing about Jesus. We talked about Luke writing about Jesus and John writing about Jesus. And John wrote, I'm reading from the International Children's Bible, John chapter 1, verse 14. The Word became a man and lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory that belongs to the only Son of the Father. The Word was full of grace and truth. And verse 17, we heard this morning in in the service, the law was given through Moses, but the grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Moses was the foreshadow of the true Savior of the world, that is Jesus Christ. The Old Testament and the New Testament. We also learned last week how important it is to read the Bible and to see Jesus throughout the entire scriptures. And we saw how Jesus was speaking to the Pharisees and the, and the scribes. He, said, he strongly rebuked them. Why? Because they were searching the scriptures to find eternal life, but they were missing Jesus. Look, in John 5, 39, he says, You carefully study the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life. Those are the same scriptures that tell about me. Verse 40, but you refuse to come to me and to have that life. The word became flesh, and that is Jesus. New Year's is only a couple, I mean, it's a few days away. And many of, uh, many of the people are trying to think about their New Year's resolution, setting their goals for the new year. I encourage everyone, especially myself, the number one goal this year should be reading your Bible, the Word of God, the Word that became flesh, Christ Jesus, spending time with Jesus every day. There's an interesting study that I learned earlier this year that opened my eyes, and I saw how important it is to be in God's Word and listening to Jesus. It was a center of Bible of engagement, CBE. 40,000 of Americans were surveyed. What was found was amazing. They weren't even looking for it. They discovered that those who only read the Bible one, two, or three days a week have lives that look no different than of the world. Imagine, those who only read their Bible or listen to it one to three days a week have lives that almost look no different than those that are in the world. An average of 30% of all age groups say that they are Christians, don't read the Bible at all. 30%. An average of 40% of all the age groups say that they are Christians, only read the Bible One to three times a week. That means 70% of Christians are relying on their own strength to fight those trials and temptations. Making them fall over and over again. This hurts. Uh, This hurts our witness. Why? Because they are ignorant of basic Bible facts and truths. This group has a higher chance of accepting false teaching. Then they discovered something amazing. The power of four. Those who read or listened to the Bible at least four times a week had a huge difference than those who only read or listened to the Bible one to three times a week. 
It was like, imagine there was no heartbeat. One, two, three uh, days in the week. There's like no heartbeat. And all of a sudden, on day four, those who read the Bible, four days and more, there's a heartbeat, a life. It was a dramatic change. From four, from four days and more a week, 30% were less likely to feel lonely. Almost 60% were less likely to look at bad images on the internet. 407% more likely to memorize scripture. And 228% more likely to share their faith with others. The sad part is only 30% of Christians read their Bibles four days and more. That means 70% of Christians are struggling. Spending time with Jesus will empower us by the Holy Spirit to be able to stand up against the enemy with our full armor of God. We as parents, we must make sure our children have a Bible that they understand, a version that they can understand. And as parents, we must read to our children every day to those who can't read how important it is. That's why I encourage everyone who is listening that your number one goal for 2021 should be to spend time in the Bible. God's Word, the Word that became flesh, Christ Jesus. Let's open our Bible to Deuteronomy 17, verse 18. When there would be a new king over Israel, they were required to do certain things. And one of those things in verse 18 says, When he becomes king, he should write a copy of the teachings on a scroll for himself. So he had to write himself a copy of the law. He should copy it from the priests and the Levites. Verse 19, he should keep it with him at all time. He should read it from it every day of his life. Then he will learn to respect the Lord his God, and he will obey all the teachings of the commandments. He should not think he is better than his brother. He must not stop obeying the law in any way. Then he and his descendants will rule the kingdom for a long time. There's a lot of studies about how important it is to write things down, and it, especially the important things. And the results were amazing also. Many of the studies found that those who write down their goals were more likely to achieve them. 42% more likely just by writing it down. Why? The science says that when you write things down, the important things down on paper, it goes to the RAS part of your brain. It's the reticular activating system. It's almost like a compass that's in your brain when you write it down, when you put important things down on paper. Then what happens is when, it, when time comes in an in important situation, it would bring it to your front lobe at the right time. Why do I say this? Because I want you today, this week, every one of you, I want you to write a very important goal for 2021. And that is to spend time in God's Word every single day. Write it down. Look for signs of Jesus in the Old Testament. Read about Him in the New Testament. God's Word, God's word is alive and working. It is sharper than a sword sharpened on both sides. It cuts all the way into us where the soul and the spirit are joined. It cuts to the center of our joints and our bones. And God's, and God's word judges the thoughts and feelings in our heart. Hebrews 4.12 If we are born again, his word will convict... If you are not born again, sorry. If you are not born again, his word will convict you and show you the way to the cross. If you are his child, it will teach you how to rely on him through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's not go into 2021 without our sword of the Spirit by our side. Amen. Let's pray.